Competing in a weightlifting meet is a super awesome and rewarding part to pursuing Olympic weightlifting uh, because one, it gives validation to the hard work and uh, effort that you put in at the gym every single day uh, with the endless repetitions of snatch and clean and jerk. And <laughs> hey, buddy. Um, and it also, uh, it also can give you that little extra adrenaline push that you might need to push out a lift that you've been working towards. Uh, but that being said, actually getting to where you compete in an Olympic weightlifting meet can be super intimidating if you don't have any experience with meets. So for that reason, uh, over this video and the next video, we're gonna go over one, how to count cards so that you can figure out uh, and make a good guess as to how long you have between when your session starts and when you walk out onto the competition platform. And uh, also in the next video, uh, how to pick your opening weight, your opening attempt for snatch and clean and jerk, and how to warm up to it. So it's worth noting before we get into this um, that there's a lot of changes uh, that can be made during a warm up, uh, in the warm up area between attempts, and a lot of weird stuff that can happen that will mess up this process. So we're going over a very, very basic overview of how this works. Uh, this is not a foolproof method that's going to work without a hitch every single time, uh, but it's the way we can get to our best guess of how long you're going to have before or how long you're gonna have to warm up before you walk out onto the platform. Uh, a lot of what counting cards is, is just a guessing game. And what we try to do is make as educated of a guess as we possibly can. Uh, but that being said, the only uh, real foolproof way that you can make sure that you know exactly how long you have before you walk out on a platform is to get a coach, or at least to get somebody uh, that has some experience with, with meets helping you uh, in the warm up area. Obviously that's not gonna be possible for every single person, which is why we're making this video. Uh, but if you show up to a meet, you're completely alone. Never ever hesitate to just talk to somebody in the warm-up area and ask if they can help you. Uh, we've never seen anybody get turned down for that. Uh, we've done that a lot here for people that have come uh, to our meets, and uh, it's going to give you uh, a lot more, or a lot, it's going to give you a lot less to worry about, so that you can actually focus on your lifting in the warm-up area. But without any further ado, we'll get into how to count the cards. All right, so we're going to start off with uh, just putting our lifters for our session in. So let's say we have lifter. A, B, C, D, E, and F. Uh, and let's say that we are lifter E. Um, first thing we have to do is put down everybody's opening attempts. When you come into a meet and you register UAN, uh, you're gonna tell the person at the registrations desk uh, or however they have it laid out uh, what your opening attempt is gonna be for the snatch. Uh, and that is how we're gonna start off everything in here. So let's say that lifter A is opening his snatch with 50 kilos. Uh, let's say lifter B is doing 60, uh, say 68. Say lifter C is doing 70. D is doing 82. We are doing 89. And let's say lifter F is 95. OK, so these are the opening attempts that we're going to have uh, for the lifters. When a session begins, we start the session with the smallest amount of weight that's gonna go on the bar. So the lowest declared weight for this session is 50 kilos. So that means the first weight that's gonna go on the bar is 50 kilos. And then the weight is going to increase bit by bit from the lowest number up to the highest number, starting with the lightest lifter's opening attempt and ending with the heaviest opener's final attempt. So the weight never ever goes down, it only goes up. So when the weight is on the platform, say, the person opening at 50 goes straight up to the platform. They have a one minute clock to lift the weight. Every single attempt on, uh, on the platform is one minute unless a lifter is opening them, uh, I'm sorry, unless a lifter is following themselves. If a lifter is following themselves, they have two minutes to lift the weight. Um, now the reason they would have to follow themselves is if their next declared weight is still lower than the next person's. They have an extra minute to rest. So you can assume that every single attempt taken equals one minute. And if somebody is following themselves, that's going to equal two minutes. So let's go ahead and lay out um, what we can assume from here. Because we know that we're not going to be first. We're kind of pretty far back down in the pack. But in order to figure out how long you have to warm up to be able to go out here and open this, we have to guess how long all of this is going to take to get to you. So we can assume for a men's session that men are gonna go up between their first attempt and their last attempt about 10 to 12 kilos. For a women's session, usually the spread is a little bit lower, usually not always, but usually about eight to 10 kilos. Uh, so again, guessing, we can assume that lifter A is gonna go from 50 
to 55, and then from 55 to 60. So what this does right here is it puts all three of his attempts underneath this second person's attempt. So we can assume that each one of those is going to take two minutes because they're following themselves every time. So we've got two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. Now the next lift up would be the 68 kilo lifter. There we can assume that they're going to go from 68 to 73 to 78. And then this person right here is going to go from 70 to 75 to 80. Now what this is going to do is it's going to put them back and forth because the first lift would be 68, which would then make the next lift 70, then 73, then 75, then 78, then 80. So again, we can assume that each one of these is going to be one minute. All right, now we're all the way up to 80. This next lifter here is 82. We can assume that they will probably take two attempts before we come up on the platform. So from 82 to 87, before they would then go up here, you know, 90 plus. So right here, before we come out, this is another two minutes. So again, this is all before the session actually starts when we're looking at this. So we're gonna add up all of these numbers, go two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and on the 15th minute, you're on the platform. So we can assume right here that you are 15 attempts out or 15 minutes out. So we can use that time estimation of 15 minutes to plan your warm-ups accordingly so that in 15 minutes from when the session begins, you're ready to go out onto the platform. Now again, uh, like we said in the beginning, this is not exact. Uh, a lot of things can happen that'll really mess this up. For instance, people are bound to miss weights. If somebody misses weights and they decide to repeat it, like if one of these guys in here had missed, um, they would repeat it or take a smaller jump maybe, and that would again make it a two minute clock. So that would make your warm up last longer. Or if someone isn't feeling good about the weights and they end up taking much smaller jumps, that means your warm ups are gonna take longer. Uh, ways that it can go faster is if somebody, say this person right here that was opening at 82, that's a very conservative number. They're feeling really, really good when they warm up and they're like, all right, screw it, I'm going 95. And so all of a sudden, that takes two minutes off of your warm up time. Or if someone just takes huge jumps, you know, if they take a seven, eight, 10 kilo jump between attempts. Uh, all of this is stuff that you can't exactly plan for until it happens. So again, this is a guess. This is a, the best guess that we have is that we're about 15 minutes away from lifting when that session begins. So. Uh, again, the only way that you can actually have a foolproof method is to have a coach or someone helping you uh, in the warm-up area. Now also, most local meets that you compete at will not have um, a leaderboard in the warm-up area, whether it's uh, a whiteboard like this or digital. Uh, most of the time in a local meet, you're gonna have to go up to the judges table and actually look at the cards uh, as they're laid out and then count from there. And again, that e even adds more stress for having to leave the warm-up area, go up to the judges table, and keep running back and forth. So bring somebody with you uh, who knows what they're doing. That's key. Uh, hope this helps some. Next week, we're going to go over how to pick your warm-ups, how to choose uh, what you're going to open with, and uh, go from there, and hopefully cover everything that you'll ever need to know for meat. Uh, between now and then, check out outofstepbarbell.com. Uh, we would love to help you with your lifts. We have a lift analysis that's free if you just submit your videos. Uh, we'd love to break it down and help you out. All right, thanks. See you next week.